Okay, hi, hi, hi. Um, I don't know who is here. All right, so I'm here and um, I'm speaking on how to help our shy children become more confident, socialize, like the topic said. Okay, so I'm going to hit the ground running as soon as I get a minimum of five people watching on this live class. Thank you very much, Adeife. Um, I'm, I'm really honored. I don't take it for granted when I have an opportunity to actually speak to parents. Um, something I love to do. So when I'm approached to do it, it's something I do with delight. So um, thank you. You're doing such an awesome job. And um, I want to say thank you for the invitation. So smart parents, um, I can see that it's only Adeife that is here. Maybe I just um, keep going and then um, let others join us as we go. I'm going to go with a short, quick introduction of myself. You might be wondering who exactly it is that is talking to you. Why is she the one speaking on this topic? My name is Wendy Ologi and I'm the founder of the Intentional Parents Academy. And I'm also the author of the two parenting bestsellers called Connect to Correct and The Discipline That Works. Can you hear me? If you can hear me, please let me know so that I'm, I'm not talking to myself, so that I know that um, we're on the same page. Okay, so I was saying, I was doing a quick, a brief introduction of myself. And I said, I am the founder of the Intentional Parents Academy and I'm author, I'm a parent coach. I've been privileged to coach quite a number of parents and um, I've also been privileged to meet with quite a number of schools, owners, um, go uh, to um, forums where parents are, conferences and all that. Um, my book, Connect to Correct, uh, was launched last year and had sold over 4,000 copies in one year. And this is a one year plus. One, um, it was launched in November. My second group book was launched in November 2020, 2019. Oh, the volume is low. Whoa. Um, I have put, put my volume to the BRS minimum so that um, I get to speak. And, you know, so is it okay now? Is it better? I need to know before I just continue rambling is it okay are we good if we're not good maybe i should get my um headphones um are we good adefe you need to tell me if we're okay so that i can continue hello hello are we okay can I go ahead? All right, you said better. Okay, so um, like I was saying, I had introduced myself and I said my name is Wendy Ologe. I had written a short description on the group as I came in to talk about this topic. And I said the topic we're looking at today is helping your shy, shy kid, you know, um, um, do, become better. So helping your shy child become better. So hi, if you're here, you can say hi. And if you can hear me, just throw in a hi. So like I was saying, my name is Wendy Ologe. I'm the founder of the Intentional Parents Academy. You're wondering why is it me that is speaking to you? And I said earlier that I am the author of two best-selling parenting books. Connect to Correct has sold over 4,000 copies. The Discipline That Worked launched last year, November. And in the first month, it sold over 1,000 copies in print. So, and, and I'm also the founder of the Intentional Parents Academy. What do we do at the Intentional Parents Academy? We help parents become parents. <laughs> Somebody said, why is it, you know, um, about teaching parents? So one of my most favorite quotes is that parenting is learned and never assumed. So that's part of the thing. That's part of my mantra. I say that parenting is actually something that you should learn about and not just something you assume. So... Yes, that's what I do. Last year, I was in California to represent Africa at Facebook. And um, that's where I spoke on intentional parenting. And um, 
I also run a Facebook group as well called the Intentional Parents. That's where I met Adefe. So thank you so much for the invitation. I'm going to run through. You can see a lot more about me on the bio that was shared earlier on on the group. Thank you for the invitation. One of the things that we are going to be looking at is why do we say a child is shy? And how do we help this child that is shy gain confidence? Recently, um, in one of our courses that we run in the academy, a parent shared with me how um, the child who is um, not shy, so now it is about the shy child, the not shy child, how a child who is not shy had come home to talk about how she was bullied. So now, you know, that got me thinking, what would happen to the shy child? Okay, so I came to a conclusion that bullying, building self-confidence and all that, which is the major thing you need to build in your child for your child to actually overcome bullying, self-confidence, that what it means is that you need to build your child's self-confidence, whether the child is shy or the child is bold. So if your child is a total chatterbox at home, you know, at a certain age, your child just talks, 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 talks at home, but actually never gets to go outside to say a thing. Sometimes many parents are worried. Many times it's the children, that's the stage, right? But many times it's also something that you let be and then it goes, it just continues. I was sharing sometime with a group of parents where I was talking about sibling rivalry. The same way we let sibling rivalry and say they will outgrow it. It's the same way we leave things like this and say, mm, it will become better later. But really, without work, nothing really changes. On sibling rivalry, you'll find out that it has made a mess of so many relationships because our parents assumed that provided we were siblings, then we're going to build relationship. That's a lie. No relationship is built on assumption. Every relationship is built deliberately. So same thing with your child that is shy. You can't just say, no, um, it's, it's just all going to come together. Everything is going to be okay. The child is going to end up being, you know, what, who they should be and all that. It's something that you need to put in work. Yeah. Um, according to Bernardo Caducci, yeah, that's a professor of um, phys, phys, um, psychology and he's also a director of a research institute called Shyness Research Institute. I'm sure a lot of people will be shocked to hear that there's a Shyness Research Institute. Yes, there is one. Is at Indiana University, Southeast. You know, he said that shyness during childhood is something common. It's actually the ability of the parents to build it in that actually helps this, you know, thing to actually be able, for the child to be able to gain confidence. But the good news is there are a lot of things that you can do to encourage your child to come out of their shell. So many. So I'm going to be sharing seven things that you can do to help your child gain confidence. And as I share... I'm also going to be giving examples, life examples. I tell stories a lot. And then with stories to be able to explain what, you know, these examples, you know, um, these tips will help you do. One of the things that you must do is that you must know, understand who your child is. Understanding who a child is, is not just to say, I, I, you will be shocked that many parents do not know who their children are. I, 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 we were running a particular class at the academy and we were, we were running a class on connection with the children. We f I found out that a lot of parents, you know, with the little exercises that we've done in the past, I mean, it's a one year, it's a whole year class. And I found out that a lot of parents do not even understand how their children learn, who their children are, how shy they are, how, you know, what kind of thing that their children actually do what they like to do, really. A parent said, for the first time, I got to know who my child's friend is and the person she actually plays, you know, places emphasis on as per relationship. It's funny how we do not understand our children. And when I say understanding your child, I mean understanding how your child learns. <laughs> That's a, a topic for another day. I was in a school and I was speaking in the school, to, in the school how if you want to discipline your child that you need to that you need to understand how your child learns 
everybody was looking at me and lost. So when I was done, I saw quite a number of people come to me to say, to say, oh, okay, I need to learn how my child learns. You know, it's a bit shocking to me, but I understand that a lot of parents do not understand how their children actually learn. Some children are kinesthetic learners, and if you do not understand, you won't be able to teach them. Kinesthetic learners means that they, they, they learn by doing. Some children are visual. That means they learn just by seeing things. That's their dominant learning style. Because the learning styles are not, you know, um, um, exclusive on its own. So you will have a child having like three learning styles with one dominant. Some have one very dominant and then one other one that actually just, you know, helps. Then other ones, you can also develop them. But if you do not understand how your child learns, then it's going to be a problem. So if you want to understand your child, you need to understand how your child learns. You need to understand your child's love language. Hmm. I was telling a parent, you know, who was telling me recently, but that, oh, that she loves her child so much, her 15 year old. But I'll tell you, the 15 year old doesn't feel loved. Why? Because the 15 year old's love language is not being spoken by the parent. Love language. Do you know your child's love language? Do you know your child, if, if, if your child is more prone to you just being there and talking? Or do you know if your child is prone to seeing gifts? Do you know if your child is prone to, oh, I just want to be helped? What will you do that will make your child actually feel loved? Have you ever thought of it? Understanding your child. Making your child feel loved? Another thing that you must understand when you come to understanding your child is how your child learns. The other one is your child's temperament. Is your, chi is your child melancholy? Is he... You know, all the temperaments that there is. Have you been able to study to understand what kind of temperament your child is? You need to understand who your child is. Because you can force through your way, you won't be able to get results if you do not understand the child you're dealing with. And let me say this. No two, child, no two children are the same. I have a set of twins. And you will be amazed at how the two of them are two distinct, extreme, you know, Two different people so no two children are the same how does your child learn how does he who is he what kind of temperament then what is your child's personality do you understand your child's personality do you understand that if this child's personality is not being read well you are going to plug the child into a destructive self-esteem you need to understand who your child is well this class is not about understanding your child. If it were, I would have gone deeper, but my time is already, already running. I have 14 minutes past, and I'm still talking about point one, understanding your child. When you understand your child, the next thing you will need to do is to seek knowledge on how to help that child with that particular unique characteristics. Like I said, the fact that you have raised child one and the child one, everything is okay. Then child two comes, you say, ah, this is not the same thing I did. It's not the same thing, really. Many times we'll find out that, you know, children actually come, you know, <laughs> they come differently. Every human being comes with their own needs. You need to be able to find out what the need of that child is. Seek knowledge. Seek knowledge, read, get into, you know, classes to understand exactly what it means to actually have a child last year i gave out a a class for all the people who bought my book the discipline that works the class was our tester class is a course that runs in the academy understanding your child 80 90 percent of the people who attended that class and i'm talking about a hundred persons who attended that course said that they did not think in their lives that the way a child learns has any effect on who the child is. And you know the truth. These people, as funny as it sounds, some of them have raised children who were, you know, way older, children who had gone to the university and all that. Do you know that some of these children actually that are, you know, way older had issues while growing up with their parents because Simply put, their parents didn't understand them. 
In fact, a parent actually wrote, said, if I had known a simple tax, how to understand my child's learning style, I will not have had issues with my son in his teens. As funny as this sounds, this is a big deal. Seeking knowledge to understand how to help your child is a big deal. Many times we're just winging it. We're just winging it because we just feel, oh, what are we talking about? All of us were raised the same way. Nobody had to learn anything. But I tell you, while we all survived in quotes, because I like to put in quotes, because when we go deeply into it and say, did you really survive it? Have you ever heard of adverse um, um, child, AEC, adverse child, childhood effects? I found out recently that 80% of children raised in Nigeria have that effect. And that's what's actually affecting the nation today. That's by the way. So seek knowledge on how to help your child. It will help you. The next point that you must put into cognizance is when your child, when you see your child struggling, you know, so now you have understood who your child is, you understand what it is. Don't always intervene for your child. I found out that one of the things that we keep doing is that we, 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 we act savior for our children, thereby not letting them get exposed to exactly what it is that they need to learn. We are overprotective. We are, we are not letting them experience their world. We are, we are just putting them, you know, at, oh no. No, the child cannot. The child cannot. Let me say this. I was telling my, my friend, my, my daughter's best friend's mom today, because we decided that we needed to create a social circle, you know, for the children. So we, we, we keep, we keep our, our social circle and involve the parents of their, their own, you know, the parents of their own friends. It's something that we do as a strategy in the home. And while I was speaking with her and she was like, ah, the girl is so smart, really, really smart, but she's so shy. She can't come out and all that. And she said, actually, she thinks that she has been so overprotective. What am I saying? It doesn't mean that everybody is going to be the same, but it means that when you are able to boost, you know, all that uh, um, 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 confidence in your child and also understand that you can't be a savior all the time, it helps you. You can't always intervene for your child. Another point, another point is you must watch how you discipline your child. Discipline is key, but the line, there's a thin line between discipline and abuse. I keep saying that. I shared a lot about that in the Discipline That Works, my book. There's a very thin line, and that thin line is usually, usually, you know, brushed over without us even knowing. A shy child who is being spoken to harshly and those words sinking in will have more effect on his journey because this child is going to have some kind of struggle being able to understand, being able to understand what it is, you know, the difference between my, my parents are actually trying to boost my, my, my confidence and, you know, they're trying to also talk me down. You, you talk from two, two, two sides of the mouth. For instance, you keep, tell, you keep shutting your child down indoors. A child who is shut down in the house will be shut down outside. Let's note that. A child who is shut down in the house will be shut down outside. Now you'll be saying, so does it mean we should not discipline the child? No, 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 no. In fact, you're talking to the master disciplinarian if there's anything like that but i don't need to use the wrong kind of discipline i'm careful of the kind of discipline i use so that it does not erode my child's self-esteem any disciplinary method that actually erodes your child's self-esteem is wrong you should change it today any disciplinary method that makes your child not feel himself that talks your child down they are abuses don't you, are you, do you think you are, don't you have sense? Any display measure that does that is a no and should be stopped. So if you are going to help your child who is shy already, 
you must discipline that child with a lot of care you must be very careful so that you don't you know do these things and then overreact in the name of just discipline them another point that you must you know bear in mind is that you need to prepare them for new situations huh. i see a lot of parents drop the ball on top of their children your child is shy and then you go to a party somebody's house for the first time it can actually be very nerve-wracking really so you can help your child by talking through the scenario even before you get there so you can try something like oh we're going to emeka's birthday party next week you need to remember that you've been at birthdays before look at um, um uncle this person's house you know at birthday parties People will play game, eat cake. We're going to do some kind of fun. You know, sure you would like to do this kind of fun. You would like to get involved. Prepare your child. Do not let drop the ball on your child's head. The other day, there was a conversation in my group that was talking about, will you, in fact, it was a question. He said, will you let your 15-year-old go to a school alone? In fact, 90% of parents said no, they will not. It's to a place that they've never been to. It got me worried. Why did I say so? Because this is the same, these are the same parents who are sending 15-year-olds and 16-year-olds to the university. What is that are we doing? So we are not training, yet we're just dropping the ball on these children. Do we want to just destroy them? So if your child is already shy and you're just pushing your child out there without any form of preparation, you're, you're going to make the child even more nervous. You're going to make the child even... And then if your child is younger, this thing I'm talking about, your child is 3, 2, 1, and all that. When my children were a lot more younger, when they go to parties, they don't come out to do any kind of dance, any kind of performance. Any, they don't. They don't even come out. I had to start to build that confidence level. Because they need, everybody needs it to be able to come out of their shell and be able to do something more. So you need to prepare your child. And one of the things I said on that post of, will you allow your 15 year old go? I said, yes. Why? Because I am preparing my child to be prepared to be on his own at 15. At least be able to go somewhere, come back on their own. I'm not going to raise a child who cannot you know, really do things on their own, right? So you need to understand that you must prepare your children for these situations, all right? Another thing that you must do is that you cannot push things too quickly. You know this thing, you just want them, no, 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 no. You just want a now, 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 now thing. You can't force it. Don't force it. It's important. Your child may never be the most outgoing person in the world and it's okay just make sure that he knows that too but you just help your child to understand be confident everybody must not be the same but at the same time you just help the child through the process my daughter doesn't talk a lot in public places but she's very confident because if you step you know on her toes and she needs to you know, talk to you about boundaries. She would stand up and tell you, talk to you about boundaries, straight up. But when you meet her, probably just, you know, quiet, observing and all that. That doesn't mean that she doesn't, she's not confident enough to speak. If things happen and she needs to stand up to speak, she does. So meanwhile, my, my, my son comes out and, you know, from this minute is just everywhere, socializing with everybody, chatterbox everywhere. So people are different. You must understand that. Then if your child is also older, talking to your child about how you felt when you were, you know, that when you were a shy person, sharing your stories is a way to help your children, positive or negative. I remember when I had a, a challenge, I think that that was when my daughter was about four and then she picked up, you know, lying. Then she would do, then when she comes back, I would say, your rest, why are you lying? You can't lie. We don't lie here. My your husband, my, my husband doesn't lie here. We don't lie. Nobody lies here, you know. It was all about perfection for me. It was all about my ego. How can my child lie? 
But when I understood that, okay, can I just think about when I had the same challenge and how it was solved and shared with her? What about five, I think? So I called and I shared with her how, you know, I lied one time. I used to lie because I didn't want to make mistakes and all that. And I was quite young. But that, I remember my father telling me that there was no need. I shared it with her. Surprisingly, she said to me, are you serious? I also lie because I don't like to make mistakes. I just want to please everybody. Ah, at that point, I knew, wow, there's a problem. You know, and then we started working on it. So instead of the, oh, you want to come from the place of, oh, when I was, young, you see children who are naturally shy or who are working through their shy, you know, behavior. I know you should parents, when I was your age, I could have stood up in that place and said something. No, you're, you're destroying the child's self-esteem the more. Look for a story that will encourage. Even if you're going to share that story of when, you, when I was your age, you can share it in a better way. Not in a way that it breaks the child. It's important that you understand that the child is actually leveraging on you to be able to you know, show them. Show them. So don't push things too quickly. Don't be so quick to, you know, actually just push things out there and then you are just in a hurry. I find out that a lot of the times we're in a hurry. Parenting does not have an end. Parenting is a process. That's what we must understand. But we want to end it now. We want to do it now. Everything now. Now, now. We just have the now, now, now syndrome. We need to teach ourselves delayed gratification as well. And the tomorrow, what does this have for me? Another thing that you must also do is to lead by example. Never ask your child to do anything that you would normally not do. You know, this kind of, you're not willing to do yourself. It's important. In fact, that's what um, Dr. Kaduchi says. He said, be warm and friendly with people that you meet. If you want your, your child to be warm and friendly, you need to be warm and friendly with the people you meet. If you want to feel comfortable walking up to a group of strangers and talking to them, you need to show it. You can't expect your child to do something else and then you're, you know, you're saying, oh, no, 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 no. We're not saying you need to just be doing it. You need to be able to show it and live by example. So I've shared all the tips. I've shared all the tips that I have for tonight. My time is almost up. We have 30 minutes. I don't know. Um, I can't see any questions um, coming up. Let me read all the things that um, uh, Dave has said. You have to be proactive. Seven things to help your child. Yes, understand. Yes, seek knowledge. Don't be a protective. Discipline with care. You know. So I, I have also shared some others that were captured in the video. So I am thinking that we close. Um, um, we I just um, share a conclusion. And then when the questions come on the video then I will be able to respond at a later time because I also need to run because I have another class in the academy that is running tonight. So, um, basically, in conclusion, what I would say is that parenting is about you and not your child. Hmm. You're wondering what that means. This is my biggest, <laughs> is my biggest quote. So I'm going to end with that. Parenting is about you, not just about your child. If your child had 1% in parenting, you have 99. So everything that needs to be learned is you. Everything that needs to be done is you. Everything that your child needs to do is all about you. Because you can't give what you don't have. So if you want to reach me, you can reach me at Wendy Ologe. I'm on Facebook and I'm everywhere. And um, like I said, sharing in conclusion and all that so um Adefe, i don't know if there's any question because i've also already concluded the session and i will take questions at a later time it's 7 30. so i don't know if we have any question that will help anybody if there is any please do let me know and i will be willing to also look at it thank you everyone I really do appreciate you. So if you're just coming in, you can just drop your comments as you watch this live video. It was an honor. I really appreciate that. 
you brought me here to talk about how to overcome shyness for a child. Thank you so much, Adefe, for all you do. Thank you for all you do for the Nigerian child. Thank you for this platform. Um, we appreciate. And then we say thank you and do have a good evening.